This is Twit. So we're here today to talk about moon base sighting and your your favorite location for that, which you've worked out pretty thoroughly, is the crater Clavius. Now, when we think of Clavius, of course, most of us, at least of a certain age, think of 2001 A Space Odyssey, where we have a massive lunar base in which the Orion spacecraft, not the Orion we know, the Orion from 1968 lands. The, the Pan Am, and, right? No, that's the Pan Am gets the, to, to the space station and then arrives oh, the oh. moon shuttle, young man. So, and, <laughs> sorry. And, uh, and moon monoliths and moon buses and all kinds of other cool stuff. So maybe you can, uh, Pascal, just sort of give us a general orientation and primer on Clavius and why it's important. Yeah. Um, well, first of all, let me preface this whole discussion with the notion that I think Artemis right now is on course to, to achieving great things. Uh, the idea of uh, pushing for base at uh, anywhere on the moon, including at Clavius, uh, is 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 not is not to suggest that we should stop doing what we're doing with Artemis and somehow shift gears in a dramatic way. But I think that um, we, we should nudge the program as early as possible to really focus on having humans set up having American astronauts and, and or partners set up a, a base uh, on the moon and at an off-polar site. The polar regions are terrible to set up an exploration base. Uh, you want to set up a mine there if you find water that you can extract economically. You don't want to set up an exploration base from where you would want to roam around a lot. So so therefore, we've been looking for a place to set up potentially a, an autonomous base camp that, we, that would be at an off-polar site uh, and so here are some criteria. We wanted it to be on the near side of the moon so that you can see the Earth from it at all times. Uh, you want it to be in a place that is inherently geologically very interesting, so ideally covering a long expanse of lunar history. You want it to be a wide open space where you can land and expand your base and also do lots of traverses without uh, running immediately into a lot of terrain challenges. Uh, you want a place that can give you access to caves because that's really what we want to do ultimately on Mars. And so uh, for that reason alone, it's a good idea to start practicing as early as possible cave exploration on on the moon. Uh, and so if you combine all these criteria together, uh, Clavius uh, rises to, to the top very quickly. Uh, wow, beautiful. Yeah, thank you. So you're looking at Clavius from the south. It's this giant basin. It's uh, 263 kilometers across. It's the distance between Washington and Philadelphia. Uh, the large fresher crater that's sitting on its rim in the foreground is Rutherford. And both inside Rutherford and on the ejecta blanket outside of Rutherford, there are caves, pits and caves. And the base site that we're proposing, uh, at least to check out robotically first, of course, before you start moving a whole bunch of assets there, is right to the west, in other words, to the to the left of Rutherford, uh, in that uh, flat spot in the foreground on the floor of Clavius Crater uh, that you see here at the bottom of the page. Uh, Pascal, if if I'm looking at the moon, like because it's a, it's a it's a full moon this week, for example, yeah. right? Great time to look at it with telescopes. Yeah. Uh, can I see Clavius? Like yes. you mentioned, yes. if it, so where, where where like is it in the center, dead 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 dead, dead heart lower, lower uh, for left. people? Lower left. The lower left. Yes. You, if you look at the lower left of the moon, at least from the northern hemisphere to the lower left, right? If you're in the southern hemisphere, it's the other way around. But uh, you will see a very bright impact crater with bright rays, ejector rays. That's Tycho. And straight south from there, uh, a few Tycho di diameters away, you have uh, Clavius. So Clavius, seen from the Earth, is all, appears to be almost at the edge of the moon, although it's, it's still quite clear of it. Mm -hmm. If you were at Clavius, you would see Earth well clear of the horizon, but near the horizon still. And that would be really a beautiful sight. Yeah, that would be an awesome picture window uh, <laughs> for, the, for the sure. The Clavius is 60 degrees south. Mm -hmm. So so that's actually considered to be high southern latitude uh, on the moon. And, so, and it just, oh, go uh, ahead. Uh, w are we likely to find ice slash PSRs there, or would that be further yes. south? Uh, in fact, this is actually the limit where you still have permanently shadowed regions. They're not as big and cold either, probably, as the ones that are at the South Pole uh, or the North Pole. But they they are still uh, PSRs, permanently shadowed regions. And they are essentially tucked at the base of the 
inner walls of craters on their on, of impact craters on their northern side. And so there are therefore places uh, in, on the floor of Clavius where where the sun don't shine. Uh, <laughs> Uh, well, and the thing I wanted to add is that Jack Schmidt, uh, you know, Apollo uh, 17, Apollo 17 as astronaut hero and geologist has been advocating along with uh, Noah Petro, who is uh, heading the lunar reconnaissance orbiter mission, mm -hmm. uh, that we, we actually go to a place like one of these craters that are within the area of Clavius to, to actually learn how to explore PSR, permanently shadowed regions. And, and do sort of get back into the flow of lunar exploration with humans before we tackle something as challenging as the South Polar regions. So again, I think it's, it's, it's possibly too late to pull the plug on what Artemis three plans to do, which is the first human return with two astronauts at the surface of the moon with, you know, the, um, the scenario that we're on right now. But uh, very quickly, I wish we could ship gears towards setting up a base uh, because Human astronauts are really not ideally suited to to search for water in these permanently shadow regions. I mean, they, they're extremely cold. Mm -hmm. they, the South Polar regions are extremely rough uh, and steep. It's the lunar highlands. Uh, they they have shadowing that is the shadows roll in and out very quickly and very dangerously. If you're caught in one of these shadowed regions, you could be trapped in in shadows for 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 you know a uh, long several weeks sometimes. Yeah. And that is very bad news for temperature and surface operations. It's on the other hand, ideally suited for robotic exploration. So if I if I you know had things my way and uh, I would I would do more robotic exploration in the South Polar regions, uh, target all these places where we're considering finding possibly extracting water someday and assessing them systematically with robots, and then have humans be on the first maybe landing to symbolically mark a return to the moon shift gears towards setting up um, habitats and then pressurized ro doing pressurized rover traverses but from a base that's a lot more manageable you know logistically yeah. and operational and pascal pascal have we ever like actually landed anything uh on clavius because as we're speaking you know uh firefly announced that their blue ghost lander officially like successfully entered orbit around the moon and uh, if all goes well they will land uh, on uh Maricrisium, the sea of crises uh on like in early in early march meanwhile in a couple of weeks uh, uh intuitive machines is launching the im2 uh mission uh and of course ispace's uh lander is uh, resilience is also uh making its way it seems like we're sending a lot of stuff yeah. to the moon but have we actually landed anything no. on clavius at Cla all Cla uh, clavius is still uh, untouched uh, China, there's the rumor that they are targeting um, a landing, if, if not their first landing with humans, uh, on the floor of Tycho, which is a very recent uh, but very rough terrain-wise and and uh, steep, uh, in some places, uh, impact crater. Uh, Clavius, uh, nothing yet. And as, as Rod and you guys were pointing out, uh, Clavius has been on the map, so to speak, for a long time, thanks to 2001 and Space Odyssey. But the, the reason why Arthur C. Clarke picked that spot was was just based on, you know, the general knowledge that this was a wide open space uh, from which you could see the Earth in a very spectacular way with the Earth low on the horizon as opposed to like we had at the Apollo sites overhead, essentially. And But there was otherwise very little known about the place at the time when it was proposed. Uh, and so, but since then, a lot of things have been found at Clavius. Um, I just mentioned the lava tubes and pits i mentioned the psrs the permanent shadowed regions but there's for example water molecular water unlike at the poles where we're detecting mostly hydrogen first and then inferring that it's h2o at clavius the sophia mission nasa's uh, uh airborne observatory that d does infrared astronomy which is now defunct it's no longer being operated but oh. during its uh, its test run it detected uh, up to 418, I think, parts per million uh, water molecule at the surface, at the surface of, on the floor of Clavius. So there could be more underneath. There could so, be more so. underneath. Uh, it's unclear where the, what, what the origin of that water is. Uh, people like uh, Pete Schultz, who's a planetary scientist, uh, was well known at Brown University, suggested that the Rutherford Crater, which is relatively recent, 
was formed by the impact of a water-rich asteroid or even a comet, and so it could have just dumped a lot of water then, which you're seeing as a residual of that. Um, but what that means is that the caves and the PSRs could actually have trapped some of this water if it's somehow concentrated there. And so uh, lots of things for us to, to, uh, to look into. And then we, in the recent study I did with a student of mine, uh, Aaron Sampson, who's, uh, at the University of, who's a sophomore at the University of Colorado Boulder, uh, we find some potential volcanoes on the floor of Clavius that would be really exciting to explore. Uh, and then the different craters that you see across the floor of Clavius are of different ages. And so they've, uh, uh, they themselves are going to inform us about, you know, how, how the terrain and the subsurface of the moon evolves over time uh, by, by exploring their, their different uh, geologies. Hey, if you enjoyed this clip, be sure to check out This Week in Space. You can find us on your favorite podcast app or see the link in the description below. See you there.